I cannot believe that 2023 is about to be over. This year had a lot of ups and downs and we're just gonna talk about it. Cause why not? There's gonna be a giveaway at the end of this video. Just, just say it. It's like a really big giveaway. I'm gonna be doing my makeup and hair and stuff too, like while I'm sitting here, because I feel like it would be so boring if I was just sitting here and doing nothing. There was a lot of stuff that happened this year that made me grow so much as a person, good and bad. So something that definitely was the lowest point for me this year, the beginning of the year in February, right before my 22nd birthday, very suddenly my grandma had gotten sick and she passed away. I didn't want to cry. This was the first person literally in my entire life to pass away. So it was very, very difficult for me. It's obviously still is. I am very close to my grandparents. I saw my grandparents like every single week of my childhood. It all happened very, very quickly. All of these memories just... <clears throat> I do not want to cry right now. All the memories flood back. Like I was remembering stuff from my childhood that I would do with her that I hadn't thought about in years. My grandma was very obsessed with the royal family. She loved tea parties and we would have tea parties and she had like very old antique china. So many amazing memories and I'm not gonna lie, this like November and December have been really really hard without her because my grandma used to bake Christmas cookies for everybody. She loved Christmas. We used to go over there every Thanksgiving, every Christmas. There's a lot of stuff during this time of year that reminds me of her. The one thing that's been like the hardest this year is guilt because you know when you get into your teenage years and your adult years, you know, you don't hang out with your grandparents as much as you did when you were little. And I still hung out with my grandparents like a lot, but not as much. My grandma would text me and I just would like forget to text her back. She would call me and I would forget to call her back. That's definitely a... That's definitely the hardest. It just like makes me want to go back in time and answer those phone calls and those text messages. That has been one of the hardest things this year for me. It happened at the beginning of the year, but it's definitely been hitting me way harder around the holidays. You go with the whole family and she's not there. There is comfort in the fact that I know she's in heaven and she's a million times more happy than she was here. So, oh, okay, I'm gonna stop crying. <gasps> okay, sorry to get all emotional on you guys, but I feel like it's worth talking about because that has been like a very, very big impact on my life this year. I am a very sensitive person, like I cried everything and this was the first person I lost like in my entire life. Losing her also just taught me a lot. Obviously in life there's death. It's something that none of us want to think about, but it's something that we do have to think about. Like we don't know what is ever going to happen. If you have a fight with your mom or your dad or your boyfriend or girlfriend you leave the next day and you're not talking to each other you don't know what can happen and they could die in a car crash like i know this sounds so morbid but this is like the way that i've been thinking about it and it's really really helped put things into perspective for me and not to hold grudges against people to communicate with people better and to also reach out to my family members more check in with friends give the grandparents a call taught me to not take the people in my life for granted i'm a mess i don't have a tissue we're gonna get to some happier things, okay? Kind of very generic goal, but I just wanted my mental health to get better. I'm diagnosed with general anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, and the big fun one, panic disorder. I've also been told by therapists that I have OCD tendencies that I've actually never really talked about on my channel. And I've been told to go and get evaluated for ADHD. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I said I had a doctor's appointment like a few months back, I chickened out and I didn't go. I still haven't gone. It's actually like super embarrassing and I just like wasn't even gonna bring it up again because I know y'all are gonna be like, Bitch, just go to the doctors. I'm scared. Like it's a, it's not even, it's like a deep fear. It's not just like a, oh, I'm nervous. Like no, I will start having a panic attack and faint. Like it's not, 
even, even funny, funny. Okay? okay? So I obviously wanted to better myself with all of those things going on. This year was very much about learning about myself, learning different ways of doing things to make my life easier. Now, one thing that really, really works with me is exposure therapy, which is literally the most not fun thing ever. It is horrible. You literally have to expose yourself to things that make you extremely uncomfortable. I was at a point where I couldn't do so many things. Like I couldn't even have a meeting with a brand about sponsorships or like working with them on something because I would freak out so much. I couldn't go to events. And that's honestly like the next step in this career. You need to be good with people. There's a lot of behind the scenes and that's just something that was really, really hard for me, but I wanted to get better at it. So I did get better at it. I definitely got way more into the business side of things this year, talking to brands and I got to go to my first influencer event this year. That was an experience right there. I felt so accomplished. I definitely was freaking awkward talking to people. <laughs> Afterwards, I asked my manager, I was like, oh my God, am I okay? Am I being weird? And everyone told me I was literally fine. And I think it was all in my head. The only way to learn to get better at talking to people and stuff is to literally talk to people. Like you can't do it any other way. I can now talk to brands, no problem on Zoom meetings. I still have, you know, a little bit of the anxiety jitters if I have to go to an event, but I know I can do it. It's not like a, it's an impossible thing that I won't be able to do because I've already done it. I wanted to put more effort into hanging out with friends. I'm an extremely introverted person. I can stay home for a month, literally two months, not hang out with anybody. I do live with my boyfriend, so obviously I'm seeing him, but that's it. And I will literally be fine. Even if I was home alone, I'd probably be fine. I don't know why I'm like this. You know, some people are just more introverted than others, but I love being alone, but there's that part of me that wants friends that I want to be able to have like a group of girlfriends to go out with. I think it's extremely important to have friends. I think it's like good for our brains. I made an effort to hang out with friends more. I'm not gonna lie, not as much as I wanted. Baby steps. I think it was literally like the end of last year. I rekindled my friendship with my best friend. It was kind of just like a situation where COVID happened and everyone distanced. Me and my best friend kind of just stopped talking. Um, I thought she was mad at me. So like I unfortunately followed her and then like she unfollowed me and we didn't talk for like a year and a half, two years. Literally nothing even happened. Like why don't I just text her? And I text her out of the blue and that is, I don't do that. I don't just like randomly text people like that. And I just text her out of the blue and I'm like, hey, I was looking through my old Instagram and I miss you. And she was like, me too. And we plan to hang out literally like a day later. Ever since then, it's like we never had a break. We've been hanging out and she's literally my rock. I love her so much. She will be my best friend forever. She will be the maid of honor at my wedding. Shout out Ashley, we love her. I think we've been friends for like, like eight or nine years. Like we're just like, just nuts like that is so insane to me and she's definitely helped me this year you know I went out in friend groups with her and just to hang out with people more but I just wanted to socialize I just I needed to do that as one of my goals for 2024 as well to just try and put myself out there more try and make more girlfriends in specific because I need more girlfriends and it's why can we just talk about how hard it is to make girlfriends obviously not now because I'm dating Tyler but like before Tyler, if I was like texting a dude, no nerves. I'm just like, like I, it's easy. But texting girls is so freaking scary. And I, I'm just, I'm, I'm so nervous. Like what to say? Successfully hung out with people and was a little bit more social this year than in the past. I think the last on the exposure therapy list is the big one. Getting 
my license. Now this has been a journey, let me tell you. And I didn't know that I was gonna do this this year. Every single year since I turned 15, I am 22. That is so many years. I said, okay, this is the year that I'm gonna get my license. 2023, it finally happened. I got my license. <laughs> We have to go in. Oh my God. I don't think anyone quite understands it like I do. She's been working towards this for so long. People in my life were just like, oh, she's never gonna get her license because I was so against it. Because it made scared. me so nervous. Yeah. Wow. You did it, dude. Wow. Good job. Yeah, and I passed. Shut up. Did you really? Yeah. <gasps> Oh my gosh, congratulations! This fear of driving has controlled my life like you cannot even imagine. I mean, thankfully, for me, I'm an introvert, so I don't really need to go that many places, but I feel like made me more introverted than I even was. Like growing up, I didn't even have the option to go and hang out with those friends and stuff like that, and I feel like I missed out on so much from this fear, and I am so freaking happy that it is over, and I can confidently say like the fear of driving itself too is not completely gone like I do get anxious sometimes out of nowhere I'm like oh my gosh I'm really feeling anxious I don't want to drive today but if I gotta drive I can do it and I've driven on the freeway I can go anywhere I can go on a road trip right now and I'm so proud of myself the people who don't have a fear of driving I feel like they don't understand like this is like a huge milestone along with that I bought my dream car you guys have not even seen this yet there's gonna be an entire video on on this because it's actually not like a woo super fun situation. The car broke four days after I got it. Not from me, just it was a manufacturing problem. And um, yeah, shouldn't have bought this car. I guess. But anyways, I'm still like super proud of myself because I bought a car. I bought a car. Like that is absolutely insane. I'm gonna get into all the thank yous and stuff later, but I just have to tell you guys, thank you so much. You guys are the reason why I was even able to buy a car, let alone my dream car. And I literally was only able to do it because you guys watch my content, so thank you. I mean, since we're on the topic of saying thank you, I hit a few milestones this year that I just, didn't even think was possible, still are mind blowing to me. First off, we hit 500,000 subscribers. That's half a million people. When I started this channel, I didn't think about it in a way like, ooh, I'm gonna get like a million subscribers. I'm gonna get all these subscribers. Like I just started doing it. I can't even put into words how thankful I am because it's just like so, mind-blowing. I can't even imagine that amount of people. Like, it, it kind of freaks me out sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. Also, in the beginning of this year, I had my first YouTube video hit over 1 million views and didn't even think it was fathomable. It actually happened a few times. Thank you so, so much for that. And just thank you to everyone. Thank you to the people that have been following me for years. I don't even know, I don't even know why you guys are following me. I, I don't even know, like I can't, I can understand from like tutorials and stuff like that, but like for like random vlog, I have a hard time even filming vlogs because when I'm filming them, I will just stop filming and be like, what the hell am I doing? Like uh, people don't find this entertaining, but you guys literally do. I'm so thankful that you guys think it's entertaining. I don't know why, but I appreciate it. My Instagram hit 100K, which low-key has been like a dream since high school because I was that Instagram bitch in high school. I have always been obsessed with Instagram. I love just getting ready and going out and taking Instagram pictures. I don't know what it is. It's so fun. It's just like a girly girl thing. That one felt pretty cool. I was like, oh, I made a lot of good memories this year. One of 
them being going to my very first concert ever, which was actually Coachella, which is kind of crazy that Coachella was my, well, were my first concerts because obviously I went to multiple. That also just goes in with exposure therapy. Going to Coachella was a huge thing for me. I mean, also it was just like super fun, but it was a huge thing like mentally for me. I was able to go to that crowded of a space and be mentally okay. Like I got through it and I'm still here. That was a huge, huge accomplishment for me. And I got to see one of my favorite artists, Calvin Harris. Mm, just like one of the best experiences of my entire life. Like I've never felt so high on life before. That just was an amazing experience. I mean, depending on the lineup, I will definitely be going to Coachella again, but I wanna try and go with a group of friends this time because I'm not gonna lie, going just with my boyfriend, we found ourselves so bored so much of the time and I'm like, I wish we like had other people here. One thing that kind of just happened like out of nowhere this year too was we got a cat. <laughs> and you guys have obviously seen Binks a million times in my videos now. He was only like two months old or something. He was super, super small. We had gone into Trader Joe's to get my mom flowers for Mother's Day. And then I see a sign that says kitten adoption and we go in and I definitely wanted an orange kitty. And we saw little baby Binks. His original name was Hellraiser. You guys will never guess what I did. I got another kitten. <coughs> the new addition to the family. His name is Binks. He is a small little bean. He's licking himself in my arms. I'm so cute. <laughs> wow, you're a little show off. He was born for the camera. Bing. I should have started to say this story before I did my mascara because now I really can't freaking cry. I haven't talked about this on my channel yet, but I did post about it on my Instagram. Actually, exactly a month ago, it was on November 18th. We noticed that he was like not running around and he was really tired. And I just kind of let it go on through that day. I'm like, maybe he's just really tired today. He also wasn't really eating, but sometimes they just like don't like that flavor of food that day or something. And it didn't seem that out of the ordinary. Like we just thought he was just having an off day. But then the next morning we woke up and you could hear his breathing. <laughs> I just had that intuition, like, I need to get him to the vet right now. I take him in, I tell them, I'm like, I don't know if he ate something, I don't know if he's having a reaction to something, I don't know if it's a UTI, like, I don't know, they instantly checked him for a UTI, he did not have any blockages or anything. They actually kept him back there, and looking back, they definitely knew something was really wrong. <laughs> I didn't take him to the emergency room at this time because I didn't know it was gonna be that big deal. Like I thought they were gonna tell me he had like a cold or something. We're in there for quite some time. He is getting x-rays done. The vet comes back in, she instantly has her sympathy face on. And I'm like, what is going on? She has the x-rays and shows me that his lungs and around his heart are completely filled with fluid. And that's why he's making a weird noise when he's breathing. Now, mind you, this happened one day that he was acting weird and was just for like a few hours the next morning. So this happened like boom, like really, really quick. She then informs me that they are about 90% sure that he is in congestive heart failure. And I'm sitting there taking all this in and I am just like in shock. I'm like, there's no way that this is happening right now. She was like, we don't have a cardiologist here, but I do really recommend you to go to the emergency room to go get him checked out there. She left the room and she told me beforehand, like I can stay in the room as long as I need to. And I have never sobbed so much in my entire life because it was pretty much like after I looked it up too, it was just, yeah, he's gonna die. Pretty much what everything online said. Like I just was 
a mess and I was doing all of this like alone and then in the back of my head I'm like I'm gonna have to call Tyler and tell him all of this and he's at work I take Binks back home I wait for Tyler to get home from work he gets off a little bit early and we instantly go to the emergency room we tell them everything you know she hears his breathing and then we go sit down and she was like okay we're actually gonna take him to the back right now and they rush him off to the back and they instantly hook him up to oxygen because they inform me that he barely could breathe like it was like he was breathing through a teeny tiny straw. And then we get called into a room and the vet talks to us and I straight up say to the vet, I'm like, look, I need you to be completely blunt with me. I need to know lifespan. I need to know if he does live through this, if he's going to be miserable. Like I need to know these things, even though I'm going to sit here and cry when you tell me, I need you to tell me. And he pretty much told me like, it's not looking too good. And the main reason why we were bringing him to emergency room was to get an echocardiogram, pretty much like an ultrasound on the heart because the place before him informed me that looks like he's in congestive heart failure and it also looks like his heart is too big for his body. He's gonna have to be on medication for the rest of his life. It's not certain that he's going to be the same afterwards. Everything was so up in the air, we didn't know anything. So then the nurse with the clipboard comes in. As the price is, I flip it up $4,000. And I'm just sitting there like, I instantly tell her, I'm like, can I please have the room with my boyfriend to talk alone, please? Nobody prepares you for adulthood. Mm -hmm. No one, nothing can prepare you for this because you're pretty much now sitting there and having to ask yourself, is my pet worth this amount of money? <laughs> like it makes you sound like such a shitty person, but at the end of the day, that's what you're doing. I felt horrible for even second guessing it, but that's a lot of money. And on top of everything, I had just bought the car. I have rent to pay. I have bills to pay. Christmas was right around the corner. There was just like a million things piling on with money wise. And I was really like freaking the fuck out. I did have the money to pay for it. It's just I would then be in more of an uncomfortable situation if anything else happened after that. The main reason why I was stuck is I could pay that $4,000 and he could die the next day and I would still have to pay that money. Like that's why I was so conflicted. I can happily say that Binks is alive and very well. My baby just has too big of a heart. Yeah. Yeah, too big of a heart. He loves too much. His hair still hasn't grown back. What that $4,000 was for was keeping him overnight, pumping medication into his system every single hour, a bunch of other little things, keeping him on an IV. You now everyone's gonna comment, girl, why don't you have pet insurance? I'm pretty sure I actually do have pet insurance. I'm gonna get it all figured out. I'm, don't worry. Just in that moment, I didn't know what to do. There's certain things that you're not really taught. Like it's just this stuff happens and it, I didn't know what to do. I was also paying for the echocardiogram which was going to happen the next morning because we brought him in and it was already like 8 p.m. So we had to wait for the cardiologist. That night was so scary. I was scared you're gonna lose him in the middle of the night. So many people were trying to say it in a nice way but were like, you know, at the end of the day they are animals. I get what you're saying. I do, I get losing a person hurts a lot worse, but they're my babies. I don't even know if I want children one day and like these cats like are my babies. It was really scary for me. Like I know I was a mess. They did confirm he wasn't heart failure. It's a heart disease that he's born with. His heart is a little bit too big, not as bad as they thought, thank God. But the valves and his heart are like too thick. It was making like the fluid or something like back out the wrong way. I'm not a veterinarian. They told us we were gonna be able to get him at like 5 p.m. that day and that he was gonna be okay. He takes his medication very easily. We have to give him three pills right now in the morning, two pillows at night. I made a post on my Instagram story, just kind of letting you guys know what's going on and why I like wasn't gonna be posting as much. You know when influencers post about, oh my goodness, like thank you so much for the overwhelming love. I understand that now. I have never ever experienced anything like your guys' messages before. I asked for you guys to pray for Binks. Your guys' messages were so, so nice. I'm not even joking, like thousands. Long story short, I just wanna say thank you so much. You guys are the reason why I still have my baby Binks. Binks is his crazy self. We thought we were gonna have this lethargic, poor little kitty. No, no, this is him in the car. You know, meowing, climbing everywhere. He's like 
perfectly normal just you know like no hey guys, i didn't I, just go through heart failure i didn't go through heart failure <laughs> literally like the next few days like he was wrestling with the other cats and we had to literally stop him because he was like overdoing it binks is a tough little guy i'm done getting ready <laughs> i can't thank you guys enough for everything that you guys have given me this year you've given me so many opportunities like i didn't even get into sponsorships and stuff but i got to work with some like dream companies that i just never even thought would be possible this year's been a lot a lot of accomplishments a lot of lows a lot of highs all of my opportunities and everything always comes back to you guys and i could not be more thankful and i just always want to let you guys know how thankful i am because i'd never want to be one of those influencers like yeah I I, you know, I did everything myself. Like, no, I literally wouldn't be able to do any of this without you guys. So in honor of the holidays and obviously to thank you guys, I am doing a very big giveaway. A lot of this is PR. So thank you to all the brands that send me things because now I get to give it to all of you because there's no way that I was going to be able to use all of this crap. Let's be real. But I did spend, I think like, 2000 ish dollars on a lot of this stuff in these packages because I wanted to give you guys like my favorite products as well. First up, we have these 12 pink boxes. Every single box does have different stuff in it. They're not all the same, so it's kind of like a mystery like what you're gonna get, but I can confidently say there is something in these boxes for everybody. There's skincare, hair care, makeup. Just to name a few products that are in these you guys may know of are the Dr. Jart face mask that you guys know I'm obsessed with. There is Kateen. In quite a few of these boxes. Shampoos, conditioners, hair masks, hair leave-ins, hair oil, cleansers, serums, eyelash serums, facial tools, lots of different makeup like lipsticks, lip liners, mascara, blush, like all, literally so much. Now next I have three big boxes. It's the same exact type of products. There's just like way more. On top of that, there is also going to be a $50 Sephora gift card. So you can go out and buy yourself some goodies. For the big winner, I am giving away a Dyson Airwrap. This is the newer version, the copper version. Also along with the Dyson Airwrap, I'm going to be gifting the person rollers, dream coat, and heat protectant. So you can follow my exact blowout routine yourself and get like the same exact results. Separate from the Dyson, I actually am giving another blow dryer away. It's not Dyson, but it is still like a high quality blow dryer, along with a round brush, rollers, and dream coat. So there is going to be 17 winners all together. All you have to do to enter in this giveaway is be subscribed to my channel and comment under this video that you would like to win. Make sure to include your Instagram handle somewhere in your comments so I can DM you when you win. I'll be picking every single winner by random. The cutoff for this giveaway is December 30th. I will be contacting everybody on December 30th, so if it's before that make sure to go and comment right now and if it's after that i'm sorry that you missed the giveaway there will definitely be more and maybe merch in the future so keep an eye out for that good luck i've just had so much fun putting these packages together and writing you guys little notes and it's just i'm so excited for you guys to get these packages thank you for everything in 2023 i love you guys so much i will see you in the next one Hi. I don't know if you like the way I put my words together, but I need you to stick with me just like some birds of feathers. More like Bruce's scales, hand to hand, dropping corn shit down the well. Wish me well.